Hey guys, it's TechRain here. In today's video, we'll be upgrading my Ugreen NAS. If you guys don't know, I recently got a Ugreen DXP 4800 plus NAS, which supports the like 64 gigabytes of max expendable memory and also has two NVMe SSD spots. But I haven't added any more memory nor SSDs, especially for SSD caching. Because you got to keep in mind, when you install hard drives on there, they're going to be pretty slow around like two to 500 megs a second, which is eh. And when you do have that long periods of time, that only might be 100 to 200. And so I want to actually edit SSD caching, especially for me who moves large video files consistently since I use this for video work and stuff in YouTube that I want to make sure that I can use this for a video editing, but also making sure that the read and write speeds are extremely quick. And that's why we got ourselves 32 gigabytes of expendable memory. We're going to add into it. Plus on top of that too, two 990 Pro uh, NVMe SSDs for caching drives. And I want to show you guys how, how I'm going to upgrade that here today. So let's get into it. So what we got here is two things. First of all, we got our SSD. We got a Samsung 990 Pro Gen 4 SSD. This has a read speed of 7,450 megabytes, which is just insane. And up to 6,000 writes too. So that'll be really nice for our new cache drive. And on top of that, I got some RAM. I got some Sodium Crucial uh, 16 two sticks, which is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 56 megahertz. So this should be fine. It's unfortunate that the Ugreen NAS doesn't specify what is the max frequency it supports for its RAM. Not the worst in the world. We're just gonna open up these two screws right here on the top for our small screwdriver. Once we have that, we can just pull this to the side. Now there is already an eight gig uh, RAM already installed, but I'm just gonna uninstall this for the time being. We're just gonna plop on up by pushing the levers to the side. So what we're gonna do is line up this tooth on the actual back here with the actual tooth on the slot. We're gonna do the bottom one first, line it on up, push it on in. We're gonna push it on down until it clicks. With that, we're good to go. So we're gonna do the same thing again. Make sure the tooth is lined on up with the slot. We're gonna line on in here at a angle and then we're gonna push this on down with that. Our RAM is perfectly installed. Next, we're going to do is install our NVMe SD. So we're going to take this screw here on the M2, M.2 slot, and we're going to take this on out. Now, I'm pretty confident to say uh, the two M.2 drives both share the same lanes, so you won't be able to get like the full performance if you set this on RAID one for two different NVMe drives, which kind of stinks. But if you're just using it for caching purposes you'll be perfectly good. Look at that, Samsung 990 Pro. This is my first time holding one of these. This is like a new drive too for me. It's like one of the best uh, NVMe Gen 4 drives on the market right now. I was thinking about slapping in a Gen 5 drive, but that doesn't make really any sense at all because this device doesn't support uh, any Gen 5 lanes. What we're gonna do is take the teeth right here on the actual NVMe drive, make sure it lines on up at an angle. We're gonna slip this on in. We have to wiggle it a bit. Just push it down with one finger, drop in the M.2 screw here. And all we want to do is carefully take the screw in our driver and make sure to line on up and righty tidy it to screw it back on down. An important thing to keep in mind is that this NAS does come with some thick M.2 thermal pads. So you can use these to actually get some better cooling on them. And something important to keep in mind because this actual whole body of this actual chassis is made of aluminum. So it's going to be great for using this to heat dissipate the thing. I'm going to carefully line this on up like so. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is install one more NVMe drive. Make sure the tooth lines up with the actual tooth here. We're gonna wiggle this on in like so. With that, we push this on down here and grab our screw. And we're just gonna screw this on down for the time being. And then the next thing we wanna do is grab that other thermal pad that we actually comes with it. Place it on top of the other SSD. Carefully line it on top of the drive. With that, our thermal pad's installed. So what we can do now is line up the top places back on there and then we install our screws. I want to see if there's any like force between the actual thing though. So I can feel the thermal pad pushing against it, but it's not enough to be like, oh my God, I actually have to like push it really hard down. Now that we have the RAM and SSDs, what we should be able to see in our actual software here for the NAS is actually our 32 gigabytes and our two SSDs. So we go to task manager first, go to memory. We can see our 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is perfectly awesome. Uh, the other thing is we want to check on our SSD. So if we go to storage manager now, we can see in hard disk, we can see our two eight terabyte hard drives and also our two one terabyte NVMe SSDs, which is perfect. So the next thing we want to do is add this as caching. So we're going to go to storage. We're going to go to pool one, which is my raid one. We're going to click on the three dots, go SSD cache management. And with this, we can create a cache and we can actually select the volume for our eight terabytes. We can actually then click the mode. And remember, if you only have one NVMe SSD, you can only do read only cache, but you need two drives to get a uh, read and write cache because it's going to give it to each drive their own respective use. Okay, so one's going to be read, one of them's going to be write. So we're going to select that. We're going to click next. It's going to say if you use these, you will lose any data. That's perfectly fine. We're going to say the RAID, RAID 1 recommended. 
And then we're gonna select our two SSDs, which is perfect. Click next and continue and capacity. We're gonna just use all of it. And now we can just click apply and this will format it. Now we're gonna do one test before without the SSDs and then a second test afterward with the SSD to see how much does the SSD caching actually affect it. Now, what we got here is all this raw footage for 256 gigabytes of footage, which is kind of insane. So we're gonna transfer all this to the actual throughput of that 10 gigabit LAN to see how the hard drives hold up than how the SSD holds up. This should be significantly faster on the actual SSD because the hard drives are only like three to 500 uh, gigabytes a second, which the other one could do up to like seven to five gigs. So we'll start a stopwatch here and see how long this actually takes to transfer. We're only transferring though right now around like 100 megs to 200 megs a second. Okay, so it finally transferred all the files. It took a minute. It took 21 minutes and 44 seconds, 0.32 milliseconds to transfer 254 gigabytes of footage, uh, but it transferred all of it. So the real question now is once we installed a cache drive for the hard, uh, for the NAS, will it cut it down by half, double, or even more? I, I, I assume most likely will happen is once we install the cache drive, it'll cut it down by 10 minutes. I have to find that out now. So the time of the beat is 21 minutes and 33 seconds if I remember correctly. So what we're gonna do is select all the files from here which can copy this on over to the actual NAS of the caching SSDs. And this should be significantly faster now. So you can actually see here, it says it's gonna take four minutes, 33 seconds. It's transferring almost a thousand megabytes a second. So it's like doing one gig a second consistently, which is way better than we were doing earlier with the actual uh, hard drives where we're only doing like two to 100 megs a second. So yeah, this thing's gonna absolutely just crush it, especially on a 10 gig LAN. Okay, it finished. So originally it took us 22 minutes and was it 33 seconds? I think it was 22 or 21 minutes and 31 sec 33 seconds to actually finish. It only took us seven minutes and 50 seconds to transfer 256 gigabytes of footage, which is actually insane. So it cut our time down by half. It would probably be done even uh, more, but uh, of course the reads were like around, around like, so was it nine to actually 800, which was pretty insane. It did slow down near the end to around like, 100 to 500 a second but i was like i think those are the more complex files where it's like slowly moving those over but still consistently doing eight to 900 megabytes a second to over one gig a second which is absolutely crazy just absolutely crushed it so we were transferring on average 614 megabytes a second which is really insane to think about so yeah i just want to quickly go over that but uh definitely worth the upgrade if you're thinking about editing an ssd cache into your nas or new green nas especially 10 out of 10 would recommend well yeah that's how you upgrade your nas and also the benefits of upgrading to a cache actual ssd so yeah if you guys enjoyed today's video found it interesting make sure to smash the like button get subscribed to some some future tech videos because later here we got a am5 pc build i'm probably gonna pick up another one of those 990 pro one terabytes for it because honestly i think that'll be a fantastic boot drive